Thanks for dropping in. Earlier this year, I shared a 3D printed rolling storage box. And a few months later, I released a super clicky fidget button. These two designs have something in common that none of my other projects have. They both include 3D printed threads. And that's caused a bit of trouble for some people printing their own copies. In this video, I'm going to go over how I model, print, and finesse 3D printed threads. And then I'm going to show how I'm changing that process to make my designs easier to print. And finally, I'll share some test prints that you can try out to see what works best with your printer. Before I begin though, I hope the intro makes it clear that I'm not saying this is the only way or the best way to model threads. This is what works for me, and if you happen to use Fusion 360, it might work for you. If you're not interested in the modeling aspect of 3D printing, but plan to print some of my designs, jump ahead to this timestamp to get to the test models. Okay, let's jump into Fusion 360. First, we're going to create the basic forms for these threaded parts. For these demos, I'm just going to do a nut and a bolt. Don't add any clearance, that is to say space between the parts, just yet. For the next step, we could use the spiral tool to generate the inner and outer threads. The spiral tool is great if you are looking to make something unique like a double helix thread or a thread that has a really extreme angle. But I'd like something that looks a bit more standard. So instead, let's pull up the thread tool and select the first surface that we want to thread. This puts a weird texture on our part, but it isn't actually changing the shape of the surface. To do that, we need to check Modeled. I use ISO metric as my thread standard because they could theoretically be used with standard bolts, although you'll see in a moment that that's a bit of a moot point. I also use the coarsest thread size I can get. This gives it a bit more chunk to work with. Unless you have some particular reason to change it, Stick with the default class value. This will create our initial clearance, and we can tweak it manually later. Now just repeat this process with the mating surface. When we slice through this bolt and nut, you can see the default clearance between these threads. These are a bit sharper than I want though. Let's use the press pull tool to blunt the peaks and troughs just a bit. 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters should do it. This removes the thinnest parts of the thread, which I find to be the least reliable when printing. And this is normally where I'd stop. Let's print out a copy and see how it works. I labeled this a type A thread. It's just the default tolerances. I printed this with two perimeters and 15% infill. Nothing too extreme, but beefy enough that it won't snap unless you really try to break it. It's pretty tight, but with some working back and forth, I can eventually get this to be a smooth fit. If there's going to be a problem, it's typically where the bottom of the nut hits the front end of the bolt. There tends to be a bit of a squish or elephant's foot on those first few layers. But if you keep on working at it, eventually it'll loosen up enough that finger tightening is no longer a problem. And there we go. But that's going to be too tight for some printers, so let's improve my method a bit. I've created a range of label duplicates for this next part. Each copy currently has the same default clearance as the first bolt and nut. We'll use the push-pull tool on each set to add some extra clearance to each nut and bolt. For the Type B thread, let's add 0.05 millimeters of clearance between the four spiraled surfaces that make the thread. Since we're altering both sides, I'll subtract only 0.025 to get that 0.05 total. Let's keep going down the line, increasing the clearances by 0.05 millimeters each time until we finally get to E, with a 0.2 millimeter clearance. Keep in mind that this is in addition to the clearance that the thread tool already creates, so really this is close to something like 0.25 millimeters, which is a pretty big gap. Time to print these out and test them. The Type B thread still needs a bit of work especially when it gets to that minor elephant's foot area, but it's definitely easier. Type C and Type D are no problem. And finally, Type E requires no work whatsoever. I didn't test this out, but these parts could possibly be printed in an assembled state and still work fine. It's no surprise that wider clearances make easier to use threads, but there is a trade-off. If you need parts held tightly together, this is not ideal. Another consideration is scaling prints. This Type A bolt was printed at 200% scale, and is a super easy fit. So any design that you scale up won't need as much or any clearance. But if you scale an existing design down, that old clearance might not be enough. 
So for my future projects, I'm going to make sure to always provide a range of options, probably three, and I'll indicate which clearance they match from these test bolts. But what ranges should I include? Is the default bolt too much of a pain? I've posted these tests to Thingiverse and would love to hear what works for a whole range of printers. Were you able to get all five bolts to work with or without having to bring out a wrench? Did the looser bolts still cause trouble? If you try it out, please let me know, either in the comments below or on Thingiverse. In a few weeks, I plan to gather what I've heard and update these two projects based off of your feedback. Finally, if you have your own system for generating threads, feel free to share that too. I'm always interested in seeing what else works and what can work better. Next week, I'll be back to a new project. No more print tests for a while, I promise. So until then, thanks for stopping by.